What's up, guys? We're going to talk about the SPY, the NASDAQ, the IWM, and the crypto markets. Let's get started with the video. So first things first, looking at the macro news calendar for the week at 2 p.m. on Wednesday, we have FOMC meeting minutes. I was wondering last week, it was very, very quiet. The Fed didn't say much at all. I was like, okay, this week, we definitely have to see something. So there's that. So this is a chart of the SPY. Obviously, this is a crazy, crazy move to the upside. You can see all of the indicators moving in a nice slope to the upside, uh, to the right. MACD indicator, similar as well. And just right before we begin, this uh, MACD setup, I was showing how it was very, very bullish. And usually when things look way too bullish, they don't usually play out to the upside. This is maybe one of the first times that I've seen the MACD indicator look extremely, extremely weak at the top of a range and that range continuing to show strength. So this is one of the few times in history that I've seen this play actually work out and uh this is showing extreme extreme strength to the upside uh we're maintaining this uptrend for so long we're closing above multiple levels of resistance and now the spy is basically getting to its upper level of the bollinger band you could see a similar setup in both the nasdaq and the iwm the iwm is overextended to the upside on the bollinger bands already actually so what what can we do now moving forward? Are we going to see new highs? Are we going to see new lows? Pragmatically, it doesn't really matter. Uh, we have to continue playing momentum to the upside. And as long as we can stay above all of these levels of support, there is a lot. There is a lot of different levels of support um, continuing to move up. So basically, Monday, to maintain above this trend line, for example, we just need to stay above 425. Cool. All right. Now, these two other levels of resistance here, 423 and 422, another very major important uh, zone of support here. Uh, they go back and uh, they've, you know, acted as multiple touches and like a uh, very, very important uh, range of support, 422 to 423. And then, of course, we have the major uh, support zone down here at 417 which was basically the breakout point that we had a few days ago. And now we're trading uh, comfortably above that. So this was this resistance zone then became support over here and we bounced off of it and continued on higher. So that's another really, really major level of support. And then not even considering uh, the 420 psychological level. So there are multiple, 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 multiple layers of support to the downside. and you know timing a top is very very difficult because you're fighting against the upward pressure you know that this move to the upside isn't necessarily an intelligent one you know speculating whether or not this move can continue but as a trader you have to put your biases to the side and trade what's in front of you you have to trade the levels blindly you have to trade the momentum blindly and just trade the opportunities in front of you don't leave opportunities on the side based on your um emotional bias towards a position uh you always have to learn and try to keep your biases outside of your trading so obviously the spy looks very very bullish the macd has just now crossed above uh the slower macd line so <laughs> that means we still have some more rooms to go to the upside because uh we just crossed above and usually when we just crossed above there should be at least another day or two of uh filed to the upside so we're already at 427 we can easily see 430 and above and then we can easily see 440 and above so just keep on playing into the upside in my opinion that's basically what we're going to continue doing and the only way in my opinion for us to become extremely bearish obviously during the day we're going to get a good feel for um bearish moves for example if we get like a really really big fall to the downside and I understand this is a daily chart. Just imagine this is an intraday chart. Say, for example, we get a really, really big close and break below levels of support. Things look very, very bearish automatically, right? And <clears throat> we continue seeing follow to the downside. And the pops that we have are not pops that we get to like clear levels of resistance. We end up falling before we even retest those levels of resistance. And we keep falling afterward. 
that would be a good time to start playing short to the downside. When there's clear weakness in the price action, that is probably going to be the best time that we can uh, start playing short. If the market is choppy and range bound, then uh, most likely uh, we're going to have to continue buying calls at support and then just selling them at resistance. So during choppy, no momentum having uh, days, it's range. It's a range bounce. You need to buy calls at support, sell at resistance. With momentum to the downside, the only way that this move is not going to continue itself is if we have momentum to the downside, in my opinion. And that little chart thing that I just showed just now, the selling at resistance and reshorting, et cetera, et cetera, that's how you're, that's how you're gonna play the momentum to the downside. Otherwise, everything is bullish. We have to buy calls at support or buy momentum to the upside. But until we see that momentum to the downside, everything is bullish in my opinion. All right, I hope I did a good job explaining that. There's that for the SPY. Let's take a look at the NASDAQ. The NASDAQ is disgusting. Um, you can see the MACD has not even crossed above yet. Um, we're closing above major levels of resistance. We are closed above 330. That's a very, very important level. And now you can see that we're trading right at this level of resistance here at uh, this high here at a 330.29. So we closed right above that level, but we need like a comfortable close above this. So then we can get a retest of 330. Four ish area, and uh, then we got a major level of resistance here at around 335. So things are really, really looking very, very bullish uh, for um, the NASDAQ as well. We just need to close above these closer levels of resistance that are uh, not that far away. But once again, there are major levels of support to the downside on the NASDAQ as well 326, then 323, 325. All of these layers of support here, 320, 318.5. So once again, like there are so many layers of support to the downside. Until we're proven otherwise, we just have to continue buying dips. So uh, we've been making money the past week, day trading. We've been making money the past few weeks just playing bullish bias. And it's been working out really well. And... Um, we're getting a lot of 2020, 2021 vibes, just buying dips and they just end up ripping to the upside. So uh, I like that. <laughs> it's easy to trade that, especially when you're trading alongside momentum. And uh, that's basically another thing we were doing as the market was falling. You were just playing momentum. It was so easy to be bearish. And uh, right now it's just so easy to be bullish because the momentum is now up as opposed to what it was before the momentum was down so just we just have to make it easy for ourselves we're not trying to be geniuses we're not trying to um outsmart anybody we're not trying to outsmart ourselves it's very simple we're just trying to learn why the market does what it does if we can't figure it out cool we're just going to play what it gives us and the main thing is we just want to make some money so to do that we just have to very simply trade the momentum trade the direction and uh, keep everything um nice and tight and leave biases to the side and uh, don't leave money on the table when you know when you could have just accepted the fact that there is a move going to the upside instead of you know buying short we're trying to short uh <laughs> we're trying to short like a huge rally all right don't just main thing don't lose all of your money trying to counter trend trade all right that's the main thing. But yeah, there is that for the NASDAQ. You can see the NASDAQ isn't as close to the upper B band as uh, the SPY was. But now when you take a look at the IWM, you can see the IWM is trading outside of the upper B band. It was trading outside of the upper B band in July as well. And it just continued pushing on higher. So this is a really, really strong move out of the IWM. Crazy, crazy strong move. Uh, it reclaimed its uptrend as well, which is ridiculous. The MACD line is well above this is a like just i mean you can't even say anything this is a such a strong move it's ridiculous we closed above 200 on the iwm we were just trading at like 160 170 we're at 200 now which is absolutely insane um and once again you know the same thing that i said applies on the iwm as well uh, multiple layers of support continue buying dips 
until proven otherwise. Now we have crude oil. Crude oil is not doing too hot. It's failing at resistance. Um, it bounced a little bit off of its lows here when it got extremely overextended to the downside, but you could see that it failed at this 94.5 resistance. Now it essentially needs to hold 91.5 for a continued move to the upside. The dollar also finding a bottom similar to what just uh, what we saw on crude oil. We got a sharp move to the downside, but now the dollar is finding support. So now the dollar basically just needs to break above 106, and then we could see a retest of this trend line. And then we might see some issues for the equities market. So let's see. Once some more strength comes out of the dollar, we have to see uh, how equities respond. But what we've been seeing is as the dollar was rising, equities in the stock market also were rising because uh, this was signaling to the this was signaling that uh, the Fed has to step in and change its policy, and a change in the Fed's policy will be bullish for the stock market. And uh, because the dollar was rising in conjunction with multiple different other factors. Uh, banks and hedge funds priced in the fact that the Fed has to make a pivot soon. And uh, that's the reason why the market ended up bouncing the way that it did. So now if the dollar continues showing strength, we have to see if the equities market and the stock market continues to be bullish. All right. So that is going to be interesting to watch. And of course, the VIX is getting a volatility crush, obviously, because the overall market is very, very bullish. We're breaking and closing uh, new lows on the VIX. Um, obviously, there's not going to be that much volatility when the market is rising. So things are falling, obviously, very sharply on the VIX. But uh, what I want to see ideally is if we could get a break to the downside from the Bollinger Bands on the VIX. That would be a nice extreme uh it would be a nice extreme. So basically, we could have a, a trade that would help um, have a short term short bias on the stock market, especially if the VIX is trading outside of the Bollinger Bands, the lower end of the Bollinger Bands. So basically, if the VIX is trading outside of the lower Bollinger Bands, that means that the SPY is very, very overextended to the upside. And that would basically mean that in the short term, maybe even for a day or two, um there the spy would need to consolidate back to support and um once the vix trades back inside the bollinger band then the spy would basically be at a level of um support and then from there the spy could go higher and then from here the vix could continue falling lower but yeah uh that's what i'm looking at on the vix and then the last but not least we have bitcoin bitcoin is still failing to close above any of these uh, major levels of resistance. So you can see all of these wicks here. Oh, sorry. You can see all of these wicks here, this wick here, these two wicks here. We're not getting a solid candle close above these wicks, and that is still uh, problematic. So we need to get a close above basically 25,000, 25. 000, 25 well above 25,000. So once we get that, then we can see 26.6. And then from there, we could see uh, 28, potentially 28,000. So uh, we need to see some more strength out of crypto and Bitcoin and a uh, strong move to the upside. And it looks, this looks like a breakout to the upside. It looks like we're about to have a breakout to the upside, especially since the stock market is continuing to show strength. Uh, this is in hindsight, one of the best, um, momentum plays that we could play on Bitcoin if the strength in the stock market continues higher. But um, yeah, it's going to be really, really interesting. A lot of people that bought into uh, Coin, Mara, the different uh, mining companies and everything, they they got in at a very, very cheap price. They caught things beautifully as Bitcoin's price was low, as well as when the stock market's price was low. So people banked a lot. People made a lot of money off of that. And uh, that's something that we're going to have to be cognizant about moving forward because uh, we are, uh, you know, just giving up uh, good opportunities to make money. So, yeah, there's that for the overall stock market. There's that for the crypto market. I hope you guys had an amazing weekend. Uh, I hope you guys have an amazing Sunday. And uh, I will see you guys tomorrow with the live stream. Uh, if you guys want access to the Discord, make sure to send me a message. Join the Discord. 
Uh, the link and everything is in the bio. And uh, yeah, have an amazing Sunday. Thank you.